Hi, Flip Stars. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at the introduction to the PEP ability test series. This is a repeat of episode one as the first recording had an audio issue. Welcome to the ability test preparation. Let's start off first with what is the ability test. The ability test will require students to read analytically and use quantitative reasoning skills in responding to items. This will consist of a variety of question types. Students in grade six will sit this test in February of each year. Now let's look at the first category of questions, which is quantitative reasoning. Quantitative reasoning is understanding and working with numbers and data to make comparisons and estimation and solve problems. Next, we look at verbal reasoning. Verbal reasoning can be defined as the ability to understand and comprehend concepts expressed through language, think constructively, and apply logics to solve problems. Verbal reasoning goes beyond recognizing vocabulary or language fluency. It is how we understand, reason, and engage with written and verbal language. So look, let's look at the categories of quantitative reasoning type questions and verbal reasoning type questions. These are problem solving, data analysis, approximation, and estimation. Comparing quantities, representing quantities, and pattern. So these are from the quantitative reasoning category. We look at all of these topics in more details. I'm also going to be linking a video on a previous ability test preparation that covers each of these topics. Well, for the ability test series that we're doing this year, we'll look more in depth on each of these categories. Now let's look at verbal reasoning. For these questions, we have the analogy questions, the classification, essential parts, sequencing, text completion, reading, artificial language, and logical deduction. With the quantitative type reasoning, you're mainly dealing with Number patterns representing quantities, comparing quantities. Say, for instance, you are giving a number to perform two different operations on. You might be asked which quantity is greater than the other so the operation has been performed. For approximation and estimation, you're not going to be giving the exact answer but an answer close enough to the exact answer. For data analysis, you may be asked to analyze a table, a bar graph, or a pie chart. And for problem solving, you're typically given a scenario, and then you have to answer questions from these scenarios. With analogy type questions, you're going to be asked to identify the relationship between two pair of words. With classification, you're looking at the odd word out, particular characteristics of all the words that are given. First, class is the word suggests you're looking for the part that is necessary and essential to a particular item. With sequencing, you are doing word sequence or alphabetical sequence. And for completion, you're giving and you're choosing which word would be appropriate to complete the sentence. 
And you're looking at reading comprehension passages and then you're answering questions from these passages. And for artificial language, you're going to be trying to find out what is a particular meaning of a word based on the rules and patterns of a made up language. So you're going to be given a few phrase or statement, and then you're going to have to deduce which statement is true based on the conditions that were posed before. With both of these type reasoning, quantitative and verbal reasoning, you must link one or more categories of reasoning, such as observation, reflection, creation, and input. Let's look at the four mathematical thinking. And those are problem solving, visual thinking, decision making and critical thinking. Some of the questions that will help us to think critically is to think about what do we know? What do we need to know? What are the important thinking strategies we can use? What strategies did we use and why? And how well these strategies work? With problem solving, some problems are complex and there are many ways to solve them. These problems will require you to use your creative thinking skills. Some of these steps that are involved in the problem solving process are one, to understand the problem. This is basically doing an analysis. Two, to make a plan to solve the problem. This is simply choosing a strategy or in simple terms, a way to solve your problem, which can be limit, which can be, but not limited to drawing diagrams, using tables, looking for patterns, working backwards and others. We'll look at this in much more detail when we do our performance task preparation. The third step in the problem solving process is to carry out the plan. This is our implementation phase. And then the final step in the problem solving process is looking back at our problem and our answer. Let's reflect here and see if what we did was correct. Is there any other way to solve our problem? With visual thinking, this is all about thoughts in the forms of images or pictures. We can communicate using symbols, shapes, or keywords to convey meanings. The final mathematic, mathematical thinking that we look at is decision making. Decision making is concerned with making choices to achieve goals. There is usually no right or clearly wrong answer. You will just need to explain to support your answers. Here are some questions on the screen that we can use to help us with making decisions. Step one, what decision do you have to make? What information do you have to gather and how will you do so? Step three, what options or choices do you have? Step four, which is the best option? Step five, how will you use this option to you have chosen? And the final step is what result did you achieve by acting on a particular decision? Students, we're just getting started. This is the end of today's session, but you must tune in to all the other sessions or episodes in the series so you can be better prepared for your ability test examination in 2025. Until next time.